Welcome everyone. My name is Lori Anderson and I am thrilled to be here tonight to celebrate Buck's 88th birthday. And I'm grateful for all of you who are joining us tonight. Um, I'm grateful for you that are on here live. And also we want to thank the people that are going to watch the replay. Uh, we've got a great evening plan tonight and uh, couldn't be for a better man than Buck Paulson. So with that, um, a few things I want you to know ahead of time is the way the format's going to work tonight is uh, there's going to be a Q&A opportunity later on in the evening. There's going to be a couple times we're going to be bringing questions in. And so we are going to want you to put questions in the comments. 
And um, if you have a question for Buck, what you'll need, what we want you to do is put a cue in front of your question so we can catch it in the comments. Um, I would also love it if you, I'm not exactly sure if the comments are working quite yet. Uh, so the comment section yet. So um, just hang tight. If it isn't working, we'll get it working here shortly. And what we'd like you to do is put in the comments uh, your relationship with Buck. If you're one of his um, um, grandchildren or a friend or just uh, someone that just admires his work or whatever, we'd like you to put in where you're where you're located and then also what your connection to Buck is. So with that, um, we will have some, there'll be some, some pre-recorded video that you'll watch. Buck's going to come on and talk about his career and his life. And we're also going to have, uh, like I said, a Q and A later on at the later on tonight, at the end, we're going to talk to you about some of the opportunities, some of the workshops that we have with Buck and ways that you can actually uh, study with him, um, which is just some, just a great opportunity. So with that, I will go ahead. We will go ahead and kick off and uh, we'll get started. So. I am Timothy Paulson. I'm Buck and Carolyn's third child, third of five. And I was born in Canada, February of 1962. My parents were up in Canada. My dad was playing baseball. He was teaching. And about a week after I was born, they moved back to Santa Barbara. And so that was about March. It was March of 62. It was the next month that my dad met Claude Buck. And some of you have heard the story, but my dad, he was, as my siblings talk about, and we talk about, we're very proud that my dad was a professional baseball player. He played for the Fargo Moorhead Twins. He was 17 years old when he signed his first professional contract. He was so young that his dad had to co-sign. And my dad became a professional there. He played with the, the uh, Baton Rouge Red Sticks. He played with the Fort Walton Mets. He played uh, for several years, went into the service, came back, went to school and uh, got married. He was very fortunate to meet my mother. He married way over his head, of course, but they got married. They moved to Canada, moved back to Santa Barbara. My dad had, as, as my siblings talk about, he had his dream job. He was working for the recreation department. He was a supervisor. It was it allowed him to play all day. That's what my dad loved doing. He loved, and to this day, at the age of 88, he loves playing. He's always playing sports. He's always looking for someone to participate in some sporting activity with him. So he had his dream job. But then one day he's walking down the street in Santa Barbara, he came across an artist who was painting on an easel. And, and he went home to my mom and he said, you know, Tweet, I want to be an artist. And she said, well, you know, I'll get you an art set in August. It's your birthday coming up in August, and I'll get you an art set then. Now, this is the first lesson I think about my dad. He could not wait. There was no way he was going to wait till August to get that art set. So he went out, he went to this, uh, this uh, the store, and he bought the art set. It's probably Alexander Art Set. I don't know, maybe not. But anyway, he came home and he painted, and he painted that first attempt. That's one that Dondi talks about. You know, <laughs> that it looks like he was three years old when he painted it. Imagine him saying to my mom, "I want to be an artist," and he's the furthest thing from it. He's a he's an athlete. He's not an artist. My dad took one class in school, one art class, his junior high school. You know what grade he got? A D. That was his only experience in art. But then he was told about Claude Buck. Kitty West told my dad about Claude Buck. She said, my dad went into this, this studio, Dottie West's art studio. And he was talking to her about it. He said, I want to take adult education. I, I want to be an artist. And she said, she said, if you want to become a great artist, don't waste your time down with adult education at that time. You know, she said, I, I watched them. She said, if you want to become a great artist, go to the master, Claude Buck. 
She told him where Claude Buck lived. Claude Buck had moved to Santa Barbara a couple of years before. He's a master artist, 74 years old. My dad knocked on his door, went around, spoke to Claude Buck. And Claude Buck, he, he, he didn't ask my dad for a resume. He didn't ask my dad what he studied in college. He didn't ask for samples of his artwork. But Claude Buck said this after just a few minutes of speaking with my dad. Let's see if we can make a great artist out of you in a year. Now, I tell that story because it was not anything other than my dad's passion, his burning desire. Now, how did he become a professional athlete? He was passionate. He was diligent. He worked as hard as he could. He saw something and he went after it became a professional baseball player. With that same tenacity, with that same passion and drive, he started to paint. Well, it, uh, it looks to me like possibly that video was freezing and I'm not exactly sure why. Um, we will make sure that it, we've got a corrected video up there for everybody to watch. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it's freezing. Look, would you like to add anything to that? Are you muted? No, I, th I think I'm all right. Do you hear me? The thing I, I, hear you. I went up to Canada basically because a bunch of BYU baseball players were going up there to play. And I thought it'd be great to go up and teach in the same town and play baseball. The thing that happened, though, is all of a sudden I didn't know how to pitch. I couldn't throw right. And I was so frustrated. And then that I was up there the last two weeks of the season. And I was kind of thankful they didn't get in the playoffs. So I didn't have to have that bad reputation. But uh, during the winter, they, they met and they said, we love the American ball players, but we can't afford to pay them anymore. They're paying them four or $500 each a month. And, um, uh, it was a small town of 1,000 people. So they said, we're going to go to the Southern League at Sunday Doubleheaders. And I thought, oh, no. When I uh, got married in the temple, I made a decision not to play Sunday baseball anymore. So I was really in a kind of a frustrated limbo position when the chance came to go to Santa Barbara. And when I came to Santa Barbara, the team that I had pitched for before, and I received a best pitcher award, they were gone. They'd completely eliminated. So it worked into that thing as Tim told about uh, seeing Kitty West and suggesting that I don't go to adult ed, go see the master. Well, that's great, Buck. That's uh, so there's, there's, there's more to the story. And you know what, I just uh, really admire that I admire you for sticking to your your guns of the commitment that you made in the temple. And uh, I know that we'll talk about this later on, but the the many, many years that I worked with you, uh, you honored that same. In fact, um, I remember when you came to the Alexander Company and you were going to, um, we were going to put you on television. And um, you came to us and said, I don't work on Sundays. And, you know, it, it meant a lot to me to, to watch you then to know how strongly you were, um, you know, you were going to hold through to, to that. And so we made sure we did our very, very best to make sure you didn't have to work on Sundays. So yeah. that's really great. Thanks. So, Buck, because you got into art and you worked so diligently, and I'm really, really sorry that the video, I wish we could have seen Tim. And the video, there was some footage and stuff. But like I said, we'll make sure it gets up there. To uh, I don't know why it's uh, freezing, but I hope the next one won't. Um, if um, what we'll do is uh, beca because of your hard work and everything, uh, on this next reel that I'm going to show is uh, we're going to look at some of Buck's work over the years and. Many of these paintings that we're going to show tonight are paintings that um, Buck taught on television. And he, you know, Buck, how long was your career? How long was your television career? I, I think I did 24 years with uh, Prairie Public, 
and I did uh, five, six years with the Alexander Company. So that's quite a stint on television, about 30 years. Yeah, yeah, that's a long time. And, you know, the, the thing is, there were a lot of artists. You can still see replays of shows, but Buck was one of the longest running where he every single year created new content. And so this next vid video, I'm really happy to, I'm really excited to share with you guys. You're going to see a sampling, a lot of his work. And, and again, this is just a fraction of what he's taught and what he's painted over his career. But uh, anyway, we'll, I, I want to share this video with you now.
Wow, Buck, what is it, what's it, what does it feel like? What was that like to see that all in just that short period of time? All of those hours, all of that painting and all of the work that you put in to preparing for public TV and for, um, for teaching that. What, what, what do you feel? What are you thinking right now? I think I need to rest. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was, um, it's amazing uh, different phases I went through. The um, <clears throat> the baseball players in the action was one thing, landscapes one thing, seascapes. But it's nice to vary around, and um, which I have done. I, I get uh, sort of hung up on a, a certain subject. And then all of a sudden, I'm back into something else. It's it's really great. Well, you know what? What I know about you is that this is just a fraction of what you paint. You know, these were these were your television paintings. Most of them, a lot of them were, and and uh, and some of them were pochades. They were just. Uh, Paintings that you did. Talk a little bit about the post shots because I think that I think that's really neat um, because we had a section of those in there. So talk about that. Well, the post shots are something where you go out on location with a small painting 
and you just paint with energy and wisdom and uh, kind of uh, bringing together everything that I've learned and just capturing the moment. And then generally you take the poshad, I guess it's posh, but I like poshad. You take that to the studio and you either let it, let it be in itself or you make something from it, uh, another uh, canvas. I don't uh, work on the poshad. Uh, after I've finished with it at the location. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing that I know, um, some of those smaller paintings you created when you were done painting for the day, and then you would create a beautiful, a beautiful painting just out of the paint left on your palette. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, just painting with the fact that I'm going to enjoy it and uh, don't think about anything other than what's happening on the small little palette. The thing that I notice about that Buck, as I look at your paintings is the energy that you could, that you get in them. Yes. And like you said, yes. you're just not, you're not overthinking it. You're just, you're just giving your all you're in the moment and you're giving your all while you're doing it and just love, love, love the energy that you did. So is there anything you'd like to talk about on your, your PBS uh, career right now? Just, just uh, maybe just uh, a little bit about, I, I know that's a long time. You filmed for a lot of years and uh, you also traveled the, the, not, not only the country, but the world. You went in other places as well. So do you want to talk about PBS for just a minute? Well, I sure uh, enjoyed that. I had the opportunity to um, <clears throat> be with the Alexander Company for a, a couple years, six years. And then when that kind of closed down, I came in contact with a fellow from Prairie Public Television. He was at a trade show and I told him that I was available and he was really excited. So we put that together and um, we had uh, a, a gal, a Sue Shiwi, make my first book, and it was kind of expensive and pricey. So shortly after that, then they started uh, doing TV series on uh, VHS, and they would sell that, so a book wasn't needed, and that opened up a whole new vista. I just enjoyed doing that, and um, it, it worked real well. Like it was a busy week. You know, you do 13 half hour shows in a week. I would uh, give little tips on it. And then I'd do a demonstration on Friday night. Saturday, I'd teach a, a group of people that were in the studio. So it was a full week. Plus, each day after our labor, I'd go out with my great friend John Harris and we'd uh, play buckball softball yeah you know buck um when i know when you filmed with the alexander company um we had you paint like 16 or 17 paintings in the week so we could we could choose among them but here's the thing not only did you have to paint the painting but then we were also creating companion books to go along with to to go along with the series and so you had to do it again but let me just tell you one thing tell everyone one thing i know about buck is he turns everything he can make anything into a game i can remember walking in there um and after after the photographer spent the week with them and they're snapping pictures and everything and every time they had an empty film container. I believe they were playing a basketball game or something uh, yeah. into the trash can. Anyway, Buck, Buck, you made everything into a game. So, but uh, I want to, I want to share something with you, Buck. Um, just a minute. Whoops. That's not what I want to do. Just one second here. Um, speaking of, of PBS, there's, uh, there's, some people that want to say hi to you. Paulson, okay. your friends and family here at Prairie Public oh. miss you. And we've got some special messages for you. 
Hello, Buck, and happy birthday from your favorite director. You brought <laughs> so much joy to the crew and the staff on the Painting with Paulson set. We are blessed to be able to call you our friend. It's been an <laughs> honor working with you for so many years. One of my fond memories is spending one painting lesson a year with you doing that workshop on Saturday. Happy birthday, Buck. We miss having you here in the studio. Some of the best lunches we've ever had is after we've called it a wrap and have gone over to the Chinese buffet. But of course, one of my biggest memories is going out to Lindenwood Park and hitting softballs, depending on which way the wind was blowing. <laughs> Working with you was one of the highlights of my careers. I'm going to send you 88 virtual birthday hugs all the way from North Dakota. <laughs> we will always be grateful for the memories we make during the week you are here and we will always be grateful for the color that you've added to our lives. We are proud to have produced 20 seasons of Painting with Paulson here at Prairie Public and distributed them to many public television stations across the nation. So your family here at Prairie Public misses you and loves you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Buck. Well, was that ever special? Gee, thank you, Lori. You're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, there, um, lot you're 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 loved around the world, Buck. I promise you that. And uh, if we could put everyone on video that uh, feel that strongly about you, um, we would be here all week. So just know there are a lot of people that feel just as much love you just as much. Um, there is, you know, public television. It it's all well and good that, you know, I know it was a lot of work for you, wasn't it? It really um, was. It, it, it really was a lot of work, but you know what? I don't think you were always working. <laughs> I just don't think you were always I think you, working. I think you have a clip coming. <laughs>
that that was such an experience. It uh, <clears throat> it seemed like we'd uh, <clears throat> that we had uh, watched something on television, kind of something quick, and thought, let's try it. So we had this oh. huge canvas. I can't believe it. Yeah, you know what, Buck, the way I remember the story is that you had seen something on the news that morning and came to the studio and said, hey, I saw this. I don't know if that's because I wasn't there when this was filmed, but um, you came to John Hartman and said, hey, you know what, I can do I can do that, as Buck would say, I can do that. And so I want everyone to rest assured that he was not putting his hands in thinner. This was an acrylic painting and he was putting his hands in water. So I just want everyone to know that. Um, Buck, your good friend Cassie from Pub Prairie Public just uh, posted a comment and said, Buck, why didn't we do a whole series like that? So I just want you to know. <laughs> that's so, the next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's that's that was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, Buck, that's the thing that I love about you is that you just had a good time wherever regardless you you just had a good time and you weren't afraid to try anything yeah you know? that's i think that's been the real uh, contributor to success is being willing to try you know when i do uh the wednesday morning uh welcome to my studio things you know i'm taking a painting that uh <clears throat> is uh been set aside for a while and i decide to do some big things on it and there's no uh, pre-planning or pre, uh, you know, trying it. Get in there and do it. That's that's absolutely true. You know, we did a lot of, uh, Buck and I, we worked together for many, many years. Uh, I've been with Alexander Art for 36 years and been with Buck Paulson and Alexander Art or Buck in some form or another uh, for 34 years. Buck, for 34 years. Yeah, that's really great. Now, we would do seminars at Silver Falls and, and Buck would teach all day long and then we would have entertainment and different things at night, uh, which was a lot of fun. And um, one night, one night, Buck decided that maybe he wanted uh, Otz's job. Let me find it here. Where is it? Otz Kilcher is uh, a good friend of ours, and he would he would come to Silver Falls and he would entertain at night. <laughs> I think what happened is I think you and you and uh, Otz cut a deal at the end and, and uh, you decided you'd keep painting during the day and he'd keep singing at night. So anyway, I, you know, I, I just wanted to share those clips because it just shows the fun side, you know, just the, you know, again, you weren't afraid to get in there when when Otz called on you and said, come up and uh, I'm going to give you a yodeling lesson. You were right in. You were all in. So that's one of the things I've always loved about you. Thank you, Lori. There's a few things um, that there's a few stories that I'd like you to talk about. And the first one is <clears throat> this painting. I'm wondering if you could tell us about this painting. Well, this uh, <clears throat> was a time when Claude asked if he could paint a portrait of me, and he had it set up. So I was on a stool, and there were a couple of mirrors, so I could watch him do it. And uh, I was very pleased with what he did. And we put it in this uh, <clears throat> a theater called the Arlington. And they uh, had some of Claude's work displayed, three in the main lobby and then more out in the back. So I'd go and sometimes stand by the, the picture while people were going by and they kind of do a double take. I said, oh yeah, yeah, that's me. But uh, then one night, 
I received a telephone call from Claude, and he says, I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but your your painting's been taken. And I thought, oh, no. And he says, that's all right. We'll do another one. We'll make it even better. He had such a super attitude. Do you, do you want me to uh, tell now about the fellow coming? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Just tell. Uh, go ahead and finish the story on it. Okay. So there, uh, we come to find out it was listed in the news uh, paper as a painting. I don't remember what it's valued out ten thousand or something like that. And uh, this fellow who had taken it, kind of, kind of to impress his friends, he was new in town, and then he took and gave it to his girlfriend. But then when he saw the notice about its value, he really panicked. So he uh, contacted the Bucks and said that uh, he had the painting he'd like to bring it back. So I'm in the studio when he comes in and a nice looking fellow, new in town. He was probably about 21. And uh, <clears throat> Claude said, okay, look at, look at my easel here. I, I just made a bad stroke. Now I corrected it, it's no longer bad. You corrected your wrong stroke. And the relief that came on that uh, young man's face was so inspiring. Yeah, that's amazing. And it also um, shows what kind of a man Claude was. Oh, he was the best. And so, and you also got to um, realize for a while that someone stole your painting. A yeah. portrait of you was stolen. So, but anyway, it, it, it uh, was all righted in the end, and that's the main thing. Sure, sure was. So tell me a little bit about this painting, Buck. Well, this is Pete Rose. He played with the Cincinnati Reds. And uh, <clears throat> I had a good friend who uh, was trying to get my paintings into the, I, I guess they have a Cincinnati Reds art museum at the stadium. And um, so I did all of these, and some of them you showed along the way. Anyways, they were having this big exhibit, which they didn't include me, but they had a, a tribute to Pete Rose. They have a Pete Rose Museum in the stadium. So they had a big picture, and then on each side there was another one, and one of mine hung and still hangs in the Pete Rose Museum. That's great, Buck. That's um, okay. I want to. I want you to now talk. Let's talk about this. But before we talk about this, uh, most inspirational team player, nineteen ninety two to ninety three, Buck Paulson, Alexander Art. When we would do our conferences, our teacher conferences, we would uh, we would have awards. And what I want to say about Buck and him getting this award um, is that Buck was the most inspirational. He was the one that a lot of times, you know, if people were wondering what should we do in this situation or that situation, it was always what would Buck do? How would Buck handle it? And he set the standard. And so um, when, I, when I look at this, Buck, I re, I'm reminded of uh, when I was in high school, I played volleyball and I got uh, – a most inspirational award um, for my volleyball team. And I remember when I got home, my mother said that there could not be a better award. It doesn't matter. You could get the most, uh, you know, the most outstanding player, or anything else, but most inspirational that you can't get any better than that. And that's, that's yeah. And that's what I think about here, Buck. So, um, you shared this with us, and you, when I was in your studio recently, you told me that this this plaque means a lot to you. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, absolutely, because we would have all these people come to Silver Falls or wherever you, or for our uh, ACI uh, conventions, and it was always nice to be appreciated and recognized, and. Um, Boy, to get that award, it just, it was so inspiring and it, it made me want to, to be even better. 
All right, thank you, Buck. One more thing I'd like you to talk about. Can you tell us a little bit about what this is and what it's what it uh, what it represents to you and what it where it came from? Well, there was one summer I had a gal come up from Ventura, which is 25 miles away, uh, to take art lessons. And um, towards the end of the summer, she says, um, would you be interested in coming over and teaching in Dubai? It's on the, and I think she said, Tresicles Coast or something like that. And I thought, where in the world is that? So um, <clears throat> I agreed. And what it ended up being was going over to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. <clears throat> the, uh, so it was all set to go there and uh, for a couple weeks. And uh, when the time came, they had uh, these American hostages were taken in Tehran, which was a thousand miles away from Dubai. And I thought, well, that's kind of scary. And then this gal came back from there and she said, no, it's too scary over there. But I called up the president of the Petroleum Wives Club, a little Southern gal. She says, oh, yo, we're all right. If you want, we want you over here. But if you don't want to, that's all right. So, so I went over there. Oh, my gosh. It was just like the Arabian Nights. It just so enjoyed it. I taught the Petroleum Wives Club and uh, give demonstrations and so on. It was a marvelous experience. And um, the, the, the girl, actually, I was assigned for two weeks and they had me stay three weeks and I didn't know it, but some of the legal people were out looking for me. So when it came time to come home, I thought, how am I going to get by there? My thing says two weeks. Well, one of the gals in the class, she was married to this uh, who made Ben Dry, and um, he wrote a note. So when I went to uh, uh, leave, this guy says, You're, it's two weeks. You've been here too long. And I said, well, who made said, if I have any problems, to show you this. He says, oh, go ahead, come on through. Good. It's always good to know people, Buck. Yeah. And it's a good thing you got to come home. Yes. And I stopped on the on the way home. I stopped in Paris and stayed with this family for, you know, for about four or five days. Oh, my gosh, that was great. I went to the Louvre every day. I went to the, the cathedrals. I just was living an artist's dream. That was pretty special. So, Buck, is there anything else before we take questions? We're gonna we're gonna take a couple questions here in a minute. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to talk about um, before we open it up for questions? Well, I'm sure. Do you have it on here about uh, my uh, various classes that I teach? Are you going to present that? Yeah, yeah, we'll present that towards the end. Okay. So, yeah. okay, yeah. let's. Let's yeah. hear the questions. Okay. All right. Don, uh, are there any questions? Don, are you there? Did I put everybody to sleep? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, oh, wait a minute. I know what. I know the problem. I have to let you in, don't I, Don? Um, Okay, so Don, any questions? Yes, Gord wants to know what are Buck's current favorite themes for painting? Well, you know, <clears throat> I pretty much have been doing uh, florals, seascapes, and uh, then I would have, uh, I use my wife as a model and kind of you know, snazz it up a little bit with flowers. So uh, a gal with flowers, uh, just regular flowers, and a seascape. But what my most recent interest is, how can I um, incorporate my love of baseball and art? 
So I've been kind of uh, looking like uh, heavenly art. <laughs> so uh, there's baseball in heaven, in other words. So I'd kind of have little players around in the sky, and I'm I'm working on that now to see if I can have something that'll please me and others. All right, Don. Uh, what's uh, what's another question? Any more questions, Don? Yep. Hang on, just one second. Um, didn't you really mean to paint the Chicago Cubs in your baseball pieces? That's <laughs> okay. Who wants to know that? Charmy. Okay. All right. Did I mean to paint the baseball Chicago Cubs instead of the Cincinnati Reds? Well, the painting of the Cincinnati Reds was with the hope for to have a display in their uh, museum. And um, <laughs> I've never really been a great Chicago Cub fan, although I did like uh, the manager, Maddox. Right. Okay, Don, one more question. What subject or theme would you like to paint that you haven't done yet? Well, of course, I, I mentioned about being uh, right at the starting point of the uh, baseball in heaven. And so I'm really trying to work those clouds around. And so it's a, a meaningful painting, but yet you can discover uh, baseball in heaven. Look forward to seeing that, Buck. Yes. Okay, so I right now I've got some more, um, some another video to share with you, and uh, I'm uh, really excited for you to see this one, Buck. I am Dawn B. I am the second oldest. I'm the famous one for when my dad painted his very first picture on a paper towel. And I said, Dad, were you, how old were you when you painted this? Were you three? He said, no, I, I was 27, actually. <laughs> dad shows that story all the time. Absolutely love my dad. He is amazing. He taught me at five years old, to be honest. I took a ring at the, from the store, and I didn't pay for it. And he went with me and my two brothers and marched me right back up there. And I had to go in the store and shaking half to death <laughs> and uh, return the ring. And ever since then, it, it's made me always want to be really honest. Um, I know my siblings have heard this story a lot, but it's one of my favorites. Um, I was competing in a track meet through our church. It was a big, a big event. There was a lot of people there and I was running the mile and my dad was inside the grass area and he ran with me the whole way. You can do this, come on, you got this. Come on, Dolly. But he used to call me Dolly. And so anyway, it just, he's always been a huge support. I took art from him for three years and absolutely loved it. Um, I'm not as talented as some of my siblings, but this is one of the pictures that I did. Ooh, wait. Good job. And he's such the master. I would get frustrated and I'd be trying to work a little certain area. He'd come over, do a little dab, and it was beautiful. I'm like, wow, how can somebody do that? So, um, but we've always been very proud of our dad. We really, all of us look up to him and his athletic abilities, his, how, how much he loves God, and that he truly lives what he believes. And that's all I have. <laughs> the one question I have to Dondi was, when my dad was cheering her along, running alongside, did he kind of try to finish first? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he tried to do what? 
You know, he's running alongside Dondi. You can do it, Do Dolly. You, you got this. He doesn't like to lose. I think he might have pe passed the finish line first just to come. <laughs> he like to lose. At that same track meet, I remember he was 50 years old, ran a 50-yard dash, and I was shocked because remember in cartoons, people's cheeks blow back? Yeah. His cheeks were blowing back. And and I he won. I, I was like so proud of him. Wow. It didn't take long for him to become a great artist. And I, I am so fortunate because I remember dad at the kitchen table. I, I, I'm sure my brothers and sisters remember this as well. Dad at the kitchen table at night. Between 1962 and 1970, he still worked for the recreation department. But at the end of those years, he resigned and became a full-time artist. But those eight years, he was passionately pursuing becoming a great artist. He didn't take it casually. It was passionately pursuing. And I remember my dad coming home from work and at the kitchen table, he was painting. I remember on Saturdays, he'd be down in the basement, an unfinished basement, kind of cold and kind of damp. He would be down there painting. And he often would ask me to sit, to be a model. And I'm glad I did. I want to show you a couple real quickly. This is one where I'm painting in the basement. I remember this well. I'm painting in the basement. I'm sitting on a bucket. This is a bucket of wheat. I've got a board and I'm painting. And I was my dad's model. This one is another one. I just love the fact that I, he said, boy, Timothy, you were always able to just sit so still. So I have these cherished pieces of art you know and, and that's a great remembrance of the time that i grew up with dad painting um my kids every time we visit him we live in arizona uh, that's the first thing they would want to do is we got to paint with grandpa i can't wait to paint with grandpa so right when we get there i mean it'd be like grandpa can we paint my dad's oh sure you know sure so they'd go up to the studio and paint and my son, Chad, was probably four at the time. He was the one, oldest one, I guess, to be able to paint. But he loved it. And at the same time, my dad would say, Chad, I love you a billion times four. And then, you know, Chad would say, Grandpa, I love you a trillion times four. And I mean, they just kept doing that back and forth. Well, there's one day um, Chad asked to paint. I mean, he was just 24-7, Grandpa, can we paint? My dad would always say yes. But this particular day, he was really busy and thinking like, oh, gosh, not again. But Chad's all, Grandpa, can we paint? And he's all, no, Chad, you know, we really can't right now. It's just, you know, not a good time. Maybe, maybe we'll do it later. And he's all, Grandpa, I love you, Zippo. <laughs> That's like a huge joke. My dad's like, what? I mean, they bring it up all the time. About it. The funniest thing, because I, I have no idea how he even got the word Zippo. That was the funniest thing ever. Here's, can you see that? You probably can't see that. Oh, that's great. Going through the room here, dad, as he knows, but he's he's my idol. He's always been my idol. And, and look, at there's more. Wow, how'd you get that? Football. Autographed football. Can you see that? And one more thing, and this wasn't planned either. Here's the Hall of Fame painting. Wow. Like I said, I wasn't prepared for this. So anyway, so let's talk about dad a little bit. Um, so he, 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 of course, was a professional athlete, professional baseball player, worked at the rec center. But when he was going to leave the rec center and do full-time art, I don't know if I was thrilled at that because he was with sports and this is, but it turns out the kid can paint. He uh, <laughs> surprised us all. Now, his, some of his earlier stuff wasn't to my liking, maybe so. It was okay. You know, he's, he's, got, he's got a gift. But the surface intensity stuff is amazing. I love it. I, I, does everybody know what the surface intensity is? It's not this. There was something. <laughs> well, you're so, talking about where really thick application of paint. With exactly. Thick applications stuff. of paint. Yep. So now the only thing that my father can't do is walk on water, but if he, he's, he's spiritually here, way up here. You can't see that high, but he's up here. He's, <laughs> he's amazing. He's, 
he's my guy. He's my leader. He's my idol. Is there something? Oh, wait, you guys didn't see this. Did you see the bucket? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Wow. wow. You get an idea that I care for the guy. Oh, there's one more thing. And that is, now, Tim and I were pretty good athletes in our time. We, we thought highly of ourselves. Johnny was too. But we'd go outside and, and turns out my dad's quite the athlete too. I mean, of course, he's a professional athlete, but he could throw, he had hands. He's, I was proud to take that guy anywhere. I guess that's it. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's next? I, I wish I had more, but that's, you get the idea. I yeah. love the guy. Hey, Papa, <laughs> mm, love you, buddy. <laughs> Me, David. <laughs> okay, my last story because it's a classic. It's this one classic in our family. So my dad always wanted, you know, you had to be fair, especially with five kids and splitting ice cream. You know, the box of ice cream. You know, cut the slices. No, no, that one's bigger. Smear it out. Like everything had to be fair. So one time we got a dog, and it did his little number two on our bedroom floor. And Dondi's all, you clean it. I'm not going to clean it. Oh. No, I'm, I'm not going to clean it. That's so gross. Come on. And then my, you're like, yeah, I don't, they pooped on the carpet. We don't want to clean it. And he's all, okay, I got an idea. So he goes to the kitchen, gets a butter knife, and he cuts it in half. He's all, you clean up half, and you clean up half. <laughs> and that was. <laughs> the wisdom of Solomon. Yeah. Right. So, I just hope he threw the knife away after. <laughs> I don't know if we had dishwashers back then. <laughs> but no, I'm just so grateful. At 88 years old, I mean, I get compliments on my parents all the time. They're so impressed. My mom's 86. Dad's turning 88. They're so active. Just they do everything they need to do to stay active. I've just been so impressed with them. And they eat right. And they're very good looking. Happy birthday, Dad. I love you. That's it. John or Jonathan or Johnny, Johns. Bonds. AJ. Ray, Jay, whatever. Okay. So I'm number five of five. Uh, some say save the best for last, but I don't know if it works in this case. <laughs> so something um, I really liked. Um, I felt like a rock star or like a celebrity. Anytime I visited, uh, my dad's studio or a workshop or whatever. So Tan was talking about how he used to pay us to clean the studio. So I used to do that as well. And then we'd hang out there afterwards until the, the night class was over. And every single person, oh, your dad's so awesome. He's so wonderful. You're so lucky to have him as a dad. And of course I agreed. Um, and this is continues throughout my whole life. So I'll meet someone new and the, oh, you're Buck Paulson's son. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And so that's always been a lot of fun um, to have that. So one of the things I really like about my dad, too, is he loves to um, do jokes. So he's a very big jokester. Um, Tanda's story was an example of that. So, But he also likes to do jokes with his art. So he's like his, one of his best friends is John Weymouth. And he'll paint, uh, John Weymouth got, was playing um, racquetball once and he got a real big um, black eye. So my dad took a picture of it and then painted the picture and then put like a bullseye <laughs> circles around it and gave it to John as a joke. Um, he also, we like to play something called buck ball. And so <laughs> my mom took a picture of me when my dad hit the ball, I actually was looking straight up in there trying to catch it. And my dad just loved that picture because it showed how high the ball was. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a pop-up. That's a pop-up. That's hilarious. I never knew that. No, it didn't go very far, but it was definitely high. So he <laughs> he caught that. Um, and so he's just, he's a good joke jokester, a good uh, storyteller. Um, <clears throat> over the years, I remember when I was a kid, I had to be careful going to a studio because you always come home with some paint on your clothes. And so that kind of continued on the tradition. So um, when our kids would go over to paint with them, we'd always have to make sure that they had like the worst possible clothes on before they went to visit grandpa so that they could not ruin their clothes. And the funny thing is, Shalise and I, my wife Shalise and I will go over there sometimes and say hi to them. And, and my, my dad will give us hugs. 
he's kind of known for his big hugs and we kind of have to check ourselves afterwards. <laughs> Where my junky clothes? Um, so very supportive uh, father. Uh, he used to play basketball in high school. He never missed a game of mine, whether it was home or away, went to all my games. But before that, when I was in junior high, well, kind of growing up, we used to play basketball. We had a kind of a, a hoop out front and sometimes in the back. And in this case, the hoop was out front. And so we're playing basketball and just over the years we played and then, but I eventually kind of outgrew him. Um, I kept growing taller and taller. And so this one time I distinctly remember we're playing basketball out front and uh, every time he shot, I blocked his shot. And of course he got very frustrated by that. So he said, hey, Johnny, can we come here for a minute? I got a really good idea. I'm, okay, what, what, what's up? He's all, let's play where we don't block each other's shots. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, he was never blocking my shot, but I was blocking all his shots. So he's kind of known for changing the rules in, in basketball and, of course, changing rules in games in general. And, and most of the time, it, he changes them so they're more fun to play. We, we came up with a lot of games over the years that he would take a game and he'd tweak it a little bit, like a Uno card game. He tweaked it so it was, it was better. Okay, so that reminds me of one more story. So he was, he's kind of known for being tough, right? So he playing baseball and football. And um, so he'll, he'll get a sprained ankle. Oh, well, that's okay. I'll just keep playing. And one time he was playing football and, and one of the younger guys kind of hit him on accident and kind of made his lip come out a little bit. It's kind of hanging down. And of course he didn't have a mirror, didn't know he's going to keep playing. He, he was tempted to just kind of rip it off. <sighs> But thankfully, he did it. He ended up getting stitches, and he might not have been able to do art on television if he had just ripped it off. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dad. I love you. My dad was always so good about giving pep talks all the time. I'd just be so depressed or feeling down. And even when I moved to Arizona, there'd be something I'd be so sad about. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to call my dad and get a pep talk. So my dad can have a pep talk. You bitcha. No, no, no. You know, just. You keep going, well, that's okay, Dolly. You know, it's gonna work out. And sometimes we have these disappointments, but you know, you're gonna do great. No, no, no. I mean, all the time, it was like I would hang up and feel just rejuvenated by his pep talks. It just was awesome. And I remember a certain time when I was 16 in my life and I was just really feeling down, you know, there just so many times he used to always say, you want me to dance? You want me to dance? I'd say, I'm so bored, you want me to dance? <laughs> so, I'll never forget he went and bought me the book The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peel and that is such a good book oh my gosh I've gone back to it since then I mean this is way before social media anything and just based on you know the bible and scriptures and just thinking positive I'm just so impressed by that book 1970 so he quit the recreation department right he resigned and then um, i went into class one day so i'm in third grade mr yoshida is the teacher and mr yoshida announces to the class timmy paulson's dad is coming to the school today and he is going to do an art demonstration now dondi was in fifth grade dave was in sixth grade so our classes got together in the library and i thought i was the cool kid in school that day it was like because the other kids were saying wow paulson your dad's an artist that's amazing you must be rich i remember some of them <laughs> so he went to the library and there's the the other classes there my class and i'm feeling 10 feet tall i was so excited i wanted to impress heidi sutherland she's the girl that i had a crush on it was like oh my gosh she's going to come in here and see how cool my dad is and that's going to make me look more cool so we go in there and i remember my dad standing in front of the class uh, of the classroom or the classes and and he has a an easel and he has a blank canvas and he was handsome still is handsome and he's about to do this painting and i was so proud and he started he's talking he's engaging with the group and and um, and he's painting as he's talking, as he does on television, right? As he's done since 1988. And um, halfway through, 
I remember exactly where I was sitting in the room. Halfway through, I looking at the painting that he was working on, I got so nervous. The painting looked terrible. I started to get really scared because I knew that my friends, my classmates were going to say, hey, Paulson, your dad's a terrible artist. Instead of being 10 feet tall, I would be a lot smaller than that. I was going to be embarrassed. But you know what? By the time he was done, and I remember it, it's a dark seascape, beautiful dark seascape. And, and, and it looked beautiful. And I was uh, the cool kid in my class because it was like, wow, your dad is a great artist. And that's just illustrative of something. Um, in my dad's art, and in art that I create and other create, I look for principles, success principles. And in that, I learned something. My dad was totally in control. He was not nervous at all. He knew where he was going. Halfway through, it looked like a mess. And so here's what Dr. Seuss wrote. This is very apropos for this story. Everything stinks until it's finished. And so with my dad's painting, halfway through, it was a mess. When it was finished, it was beautiful. And so I've seen my dad paint, you know, hundreds of paintings over the years in person and, and on PBS. Halfway through, sometimes you wonder, by the time he's done, it's beautiful. Oh, that's a tough act to follow. But here I am. <laughs> this is Tanda Lee, and I'm number four on the, the chart. So yes, my dad, where Tim has talked about going to the school and doing that demonstration where you, you know, it was looked awful at first and it was going to be this beautiful masterpiece. Well, I had the same ambition as painting my room, my bedroom. And I thought, what would be better than my dad coming in and helping me paint? And he was so excited. I'm like, Dad, I don't want to paint my room baby blue. This is when I was in high school. Oh yeah, that's great. You know, let's just go out there and get it. And I mean, I was just like so prepared for this beautiful blue room. Well, until my dad got the roller and you, he just went painted up and he went over the outlets. He went up to the ceiling, <laughs> over, back. My whole entire room was blue. There was no baseboards. The outlet, everything was blue. You see, you like it. You like it. Like it, Dolly. He called me Dolly too, and my mom Dolly. So it, it really was kind of the opposite. It wasn't that great at the end. <laughs> 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 and then I too used to be able to do a model. My dad loved to do these sketches of us on the big, huge paintings, though. He would do like four by three. Do you remember those big, huge paintings? But it was so nice because I used to go to his studio and I used to, one day he's okay, we'll just put on the roller skates. And it was so fun. I was just going back and forth and all that. And remember, I still pictured the picture in my mind after it was done. Like I was just kind of like in action doing roller skating. So fun. I didn't like the ones where you just had to sit there, there and pose. That was really boring. But, <laughs> and then what I especially loved is he would pay us to clean his studio. So I'd go in there, but the bathroom sink was just, now I think it'd be a treasure, but it was, I mean, just paint all over it. It was supposed to be white, but there was just specks and smudges. And I would always wonder like, oh, I kind of feel bad cleaning this off. Like I wonder what painting he was doing here. I wonder what he was doing here. But it was just, it was loaded with paint. And actually it didn't really get that clean, but <laughs> it was better. And then that transferred over to the house he lives in now. I think it all started by when he was leaving the house or opening the door, you know, he could be a little careless and might get a little smudge on the door, on the front door. And my mom, oh, gee whiz, look at all this like paint on the door. And of course my dad has this brilliant idea. I'll just paint the door. So we now have, they have at their house, when you go in, when you're going to leave, it's like this garden front door. It has leaves and just everywhere and kind of extends off the walls. <laughs> so he's safe with marking the walls. That's so funny. <laughs> we'll probably all want that door one day. John, why don't you tell the story about the name, your naming? Well, yeah, that's a good story. All right, so he, um, dad was playing, what, what was he, coaching a baseball game? No, coaching some baseball team. And he goes up to this guy, Ray, hey, Ray, if you hit a home run, I'll name my kid after you. 
And I think at that point, mom was in labor with the first child with Dave. So he hit a home run and he didn't name Dave after Ray. So, and then Ray ended up going to, was it the Vietnam War? Yes. And he got killed, um, oh. which was a tragedy. And so at that point, my dad said, okay, I'll name my next kid after Ray. So that's my middle name is Ray. Well, after he died, he, the kid after he died. Those of you who are watching, my dad keeps his promises. Sometimes it takes a while, but he does, he does kept his promise to Ray Burgess. Anything else come to mind, Dave? That's a wrap, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Each of us have had individuals over the years say, oh, are you the son or the daughter of Buck Paulson? Never once for half, even half a second, do we hesitate to say yes thinking that, oh my, I wonder if this person has a bad or a good impression of dad. Never, ever entered in a, any of our minds. If somebody said, are you the son or the daughter of Buck Paulson? We so proudly immediately said, and still do to this day, yes, because we know what the answer is going to be, don't we, Johns? It's like what you said. It's like, oh my gosh, your dad is the greatest guy ever. I love your dad. Your dad has done this for me. He's done this for this person and so forth. So to be able to live a life in such a way where your kids, uh, there's never, ever, ever any doubt that every person is going to say something positive about dad. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. But we truly love our parents. My mom is just amazing too. We're just so, so blessed and I want to wish my dad a happy, happy birthday too. Mom is really so much better than him, you know? And <laughs> we talk so much about how wonderful that is. And you know who the first person would be to say that? It would be dad, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I think of that sometimes, again, you know, just supporting him in his art. I mean, he didn't show a lot of talent right off the bat. I don't I think I mean, he, he didn't. He didn't have a lot. I mean, again, that he only took one class in art as a as a teenager. He got a D, but mom was always always has been so supportive in everything that he's done. Art uh, as a father, in his church assignments, in his sports, whatever dad's passion is going out and playing ball, you know, several times a week. I never heard her complain say, you're spending too much time painting in the basement. You're doing too, spending too much time playing sports with your friends. Never heard one word of complaint. And she is just an angel. And so with my dad and my mom, halfway through their marriage, this is the exception. Their marriage has always been beautiful. My dad treats my mom like a queen. He always has. One thing he would never allow any of his five kids to do is show any disrespect to my mom. If we did that, he, he wasn't physical. Boy, he'd give us that look, wouldn't he, guys? It was yes. like, and that tone of voice. It was oh, like we no. knew we had stepped out of line. He would never allow any disrespect shown towards his girlfriend, his eternal companion. And so each of us, um, you know, have grown up with that. We saw that example. I, I try to live my life the way that my dad has as an artist going after things with, with the enthusiasm and the passion. And he, he understood that he needed to find others who could help him as well. Um, so he found Claude Buck. Why not, you know, shorten the learning curve. But the, the passion that he showed, the way that he treats his wife, the way that he treats all of us with incredible love. Uh, we'll hear about families. Growing up, I thought that all families were happy and loving like ours. I discovered that we have an exceptional family because we have an exceptional father who married someone even more exceptional than him. But his love for the Savior, when you talk about going after art with passion and going after sports with passion. He has always passionately, with great love, followed the Savior, Jesus Christ. His whole life has revolved around that, and it is reflected in his art, how he treats students, and how he has lived his life. So at 88 years old, you're not finished, Buck. You don't stink, though. 
You are great. <laughs> and I love you, Buck, dad, with all my heart. <clears throat> The greatest work we will ever do will be within the walls of our own home, our, of our home, David O. McKay. And Buck, that uh, um, definitely shows here. You know, we know you as a great artist. We know you as a great teacher. We know you as a great man. We now know you as a great father and a great husband. We already knew that. But to hear what your the uh, to see the love and respect that your kids have for you um, shows us a whole nother side to you. And um, Buck, what is there anything you would like to say right now? <laughs> I'm uh, overwhelmed. It's um, it's above and beyond what I could hope for. I knew they would express those things. I don't. Uh, I don't deny we we meet together <clears throat> on Zoom every first Sunday, and it's just a continued expression of uh, love for each other. Well, Buck, you know, I just have one more thing that I'd like to share with you, um, and then we're going to go back. We're going to open it up for questions again. Um, I want to share something with you, but before I do, you know, Buck, we, we, 34 years, we've been working together and we've done some, we've had some great times. We've done some great things and we've helped a lot of people over the years, um, better their art and just even their lives. And, uh, but I want to tell you the thing that I'm most grateful for, for all of that, all of that, that you've done you know, all of the great times and everything that we've had together, but I want to share something else with you. Whoops, just a minute. Um, this says, live in such a way that those who know you but don't know God will come to know God because they know you. That's beautiful. And Buck, you know what? All of these years, you know, we can go back to the plaque that uh, that you got from Alexander Art. Um, but I just want to tell you, the thing that I am eternally grateful for you, to you, for is that um, I might have helped you in some small ways along the way in your art career, but you know what? You taught me about God. You introduced me to God, and I will be, I'm eternally grateful for that. And you did it just this way. Live in such a way that those who know you but don't know God will come to know God because they know, they know you. And Buck, I thank you for that. I, you've changed, you changed my life by introducing me to God. You changed our children's lives, the trajectory of, of, um, you know, generations to come. And I thank you for that. Well, you know, you look at that 34 years, there's never been a time when we were in any way not satisfied with each other. We mm -hmm. truly have had a relationship that was made in heaven. And yeah, continued, that's, on yeah. This, continued on this earth and we'll go yeah. for it. Right. And you know what? I just want to say uh, to everyone, we have a lot of fun. We we're, we hope that you'll join in. If you're not participating in Buck's workshops or his uh, some of the events we're going to tell you about, we hope you do because we continue to have a great time here. Um, Don, what about uh, questions? Are you texting me questions? I saw one question that uh, Tim Paulson wants to know. And, and Tim, was, um, was that... Um, you want to know what my favorite painting is of Bucks? I think that was the question. Is is uh, I'm going to bring you in, Don. Is that right? Is that the question, or was it Buck's favorite painting? It was Buck's favorite painting, ever. Good, good. Oh, good, good, good. I w I misunderstood the question, and I'm glad it wasn't mine because I don't have one. Buck, what's your Tim Paulson wants to, your your sweet son wants to know what's your favorite painting ever? 
Well, that's a tough question. Usually I would answer it, the one I'm working on now. But uh, I do have a, a large one that's in the living room. It's uh, 30 by 40. It's a landscape. I like it so much that I gave it to Carolyn so that I would in, uh, not be tempted to sell it. But that doesn't show it to you. Yeah. All right. What other questions do you have, Don? Bridget wants to know what kind of paintings did you paint after your visit in Paris and what inspired you? I can't I can't think that there was any change. I I just uh I remember Claude Buck was so enamored with uh Leonardo da Vinci and of course the Mona Lisa. Well, I did, I thought, well that's nice. It's quality work and so on. But when I was in the Louvre and and they had uh the Mona Lisa was covered. There was glass surrounding her in a little uh railing so you couldn't get too close but i remember looking at that and i thought my gosh that's great it just it it, it compelled me to stay there it was it was hard to get away so he truly was a great artist uh, i i don't think i changed any uh direction necessarily by uh my trip to paris or to Dubai, but uh, just I, I even to this day I think just do a little more careful work because it's easy to get uh, rushing through something or something's a little tedious to do, but stick with it. Well, you know, Buck, uh, bringing up uh, rushing through something. Um, with your career, your long-standing career with public television, where you had to rush, or when you taught workshops and you had to rush, you know, it, it's pretty hard to to switch gears like that. So, but I love what we're doing now, where you're doing more careful work. You're you, you're, we finally give you all the time you need, yes. and uh, and that's really really been great. Don, what other questions? <clears throat> What was your relationship with Bill like? Oh, gosh. You know, <clears throat> the first time I met Bill, I was down in, uh, well, it was in Santa Ana, I think, someplace. And I was teaching a workshop, and he was in a room where he was doing a demonstration. And he came out, you know, just said hello and all that. And, he was very complimentary. Well, <clears throat> later when it came time for an opportunity to uh, consider the Alexander Company, I remember going up and staying in this uh, hotel. And uh, <clears throat> when, when we were coming down the elevator, uh, Bill said, how can, we make each, how can we make people love each other more? What can we do? And I was so impressed with him. And then he was in by the uh, the clerk and just laughing and talking and that. And I thought, oh, it's so easy when you have such a good life and it's so easy to be uh, receptive. And then I read his life story, how he had been a prisoner of war. And he came out not hating anybody, so I thought he truly, he truly is what he exudes, and that's goodness. I was very impressed with Bill, and we uh, we actually did a couple series together. I remember one where we were coming across this bridge uh, on the openings. It'd be together for opening of his show, opening together for one of my shows. And I don't remember whose this was. But we were coming across, cross over the bridge, and we were singing it together. We looked like a couple of drunken sailors. But he was the best. Thank you, Buck. All right, Don, another question. Where does your faith come from? And what is your fav favorite Bible verse? 
I, I have a verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't know if that's in the Bible or Book of Mormon. What, what was the first part of the question? Where does your faith come from? Well, <clears throat> I'd have to give a lot of credit to my dear mother who was very faithful. And I remember we were uh, going to this church and this uh, minister was kind of preaching from a science book. And I remember my mother, uh, on Sunday mornings, we, there's always church programs on the radio. And she turned it on one Sunday morning. And the first thing she heard was, beware of false prophets. So that was good enough for her. We then all went over to this other church. But uh, a lot of things happened. I was in the uh, army and I I met a Mormon and uh, I was impressed with him. But nevertheless, when I went back home, I threw away the Book of Mormon he had given me. Not that I didn't think it might be true, but I, I think I don't I don't need it. I can I can worship in another way. But a lot of things happened that uh, all of a sudden I put religion first, and um, I've been blessed because of it. All right, thank you, Buck. Hey, Don, uh, do you have another question? I'm I'm going through looking. I think that's okay. it for now. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So what I'd like to do right now um, is I want to I want to talk a little bit about um, the the workshops that Buck is doing currently with Alexander Art, and we do it all through Zoom. Some of you know about him. Some of you do not. So. I want to share with you a slide, just a minute. So this one, uh, where'd it go? Um, just a minute. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is called, uh, Welcome to My Studio Wall Ready Workshop. Um, and every Wednesday we meet on Zoom and um, it, th there's no cost to this class. And we get to we get to go into Buck's studio and um, look over the shoulder of a master artist as he works on his uh, paintings, paintings that he's done in the past. Buck, I'm going to let you talk about it for just a minute. But uh, just the, the thing is, this isn't a step by step project or anything like that. We have workshops like that, but this one is Buck's in his studio painting on paintings that he maybe thought was done. But the thing that we know about Buck Paulson is he always continues to grow in his art and in his life. And so as he grows as an artist, even at 88, he still sees things on how he can make a painting better. And the nice thing about it is while he's in the studio painting, he tells us, he talks out loud and he tells us what he's thinking about. And so to be able to get inside the mind of a master artist is just amazing. And that's what we get uh, to do. Buck, do you want to, you want to add um, anything to that? Well, I wish that uh, welcome to my studio was lower so you could see what I've done in the middle of the painting, but I guess, that's tough, right? So, well, you know what? Yeah, they'll have to come to the event to see it. That's true. So tomorrow morning, I will be doing a painting. And I, I haven't totally decided which one yet. But I'm leaning a little bit towards the landscape with a, a stream running through it. But see, I take a painting that isn't quite finished. And it might be where I'm not stopping on, on purpose, so I, I go on with it. I take it as far as I can. And then I realize that it needs some more work. And I, I haven't made any plans on how to do it. So you're watching me and listening to me, uh, my thought process as I'm uh, 
going on with the painting. And we call it to the wall because I have a wall where I'll put good paintings, but if they're not great, they don't make the wall. But it's a, it's a marvelous experience. I can tell you two more things regarding this that Buck didn't mention. Uh, one is when he gets done painting at the end of the session, he opens it up to the people that are watching and he asks our opinion. Think about it. Master artist Buck Paulson, who can outpaint all of us, is asking for our opinion. What does that say to, you know, what does that say about Buck? Um, he detaches himself from the painting. He wants to know what we see and what we think might make it better. And so we have a discussion about that. And it's really nice because somebody might say something and Buck will go, oh, yes, I see that. And Buck always writes down what we suggest. And he watches the video before he goes on. And sometimes he changes it the way that we suggest. And sometimes he doesn't. But um, just the, the respect and the trust and the honesty that goes back and forth between the people that are there and Buck is, it's just really a, a great experience. So we certainly hope you'll join us. Um, another opportunity that we have is, it's called AAG. And we, um, we called that because it, when we first started it, it's, we called it the Alexander Art Guild. This is a class, and this uh, the, the Wednesday event is free to anybody that wants to come. You just have to register for the event, and we post uh, the, the links to those. We email them out to our, our subscribers, and we also put it on Facebook, on both Buck's Facebook and our Facebook. And you can, you can click on the link and register for this. This is a, a subscription class that you pay monthly for, and but what this class is, it's where you bring your artwork to Buck and Buck critiques it. You send in a photo and then he spends some time evaluating the painting and he tells you how you can make your own art be even better. And I'm going to give you an example of just um, of one of the one of of Sue. Sue was so gracious to let us let me share this picture. I just want to kind of show you and Buck, you talk about what happens here. OK. I'm going to share. This is Sue's painting. She started with the one on the right. She ended with the one on the left. Buck, what? Uh, no, just, just the opposite. She started with the one on the left and finished on the right. I guess it depends on if you've got your screen <laughs> mirrored. <laughs> you know, this, I hope you can see this line here. That's the separation line between the two paintings. And <clears throat> what we suggested that she do was one, make sure that the road tapers down. This is how she had it to start with. And then see those hills back there? We said soften them to make them go in the distance. And then add a little light to the edge of the roof so you can see it, which was good. Now she's got the same tree here, but over here, we we suggested she add some fence posts, which was very helpful. And then uh, also she added this big tree. And uh, she did a marvelous job on that. It's just a, a beautiful step up. So the uh, thank you, Sue. And Sue, here's the thing. Buck will give suggestions and then the other people in the class will give suggestions or make comments. And then Sue does the work. She goes back and she takes the suggestions and then she does the work. And then she resubmits the painting until she has it to the way that she wants it. So um, that was that's a great example. Sue, I always love that painting. I think you've done a yeah. wonderful job there. Um, one other one other opportunity that we have is we have workshops and these are step by step um, right from a blank canvas to a finished painting and uh, this is an example let me find it this is an example of one that's coming up it's called morning glory and it's a workshop and review with master artist buck paulson the beautiful thing about this workshop 
is uh, you get the video. Buck, again, when he was painting on public television, he didn't have a lot of time. Uh, but now we record these workshops through Zoom and I tell him he can have all the time he wants. I think this particular one, there it's either three or four sessions that we've got together. So it's like several, it's a few hours long, all of the instruction. And so the way it works is you get the first part, uh, you get the video, you get to watch the video, you get to paint the painting from the video, and then you get to submit the painting to Buck for critique along the way. And so again, it's it's um, it's not just painting from a video. It's getting a master artist's feedback and opinion. And really, people, I'm we're watching people learn to paint much better with that feedback. So that this we have another workshop starting up um, on Tuesday, September twentieth. Now, um, how can you? Whoops! How can you know about these things? On our homepage, and Dawn, I don't know if you can put links in uh, in the chat or not. Um, let me find. On if you go to alexanderart.com, find it here. Just a minute. Oh, right here. Okay, if you go to alexanderart.com and you sign up right here for our daily tips. One, we send every morning, you get a video, uh, uh, just a short video, sometimes two minutes, sometimes eight minutes, the, where we just talk about a particular um, subject. And it could be Tom Anderson, Buck Paulson, Bill Alexander. There's several different artists in there. And these tips come from programs that we've done over the years. If you sign up to, on our mailing list here, you'll also be notified of any kind of workshops that we have or uh, any events. So we highly recommend that, that you do that. So Don, I'm going to ask you one more time if there's any more questions. And um, I don't see you on your camera on, Don, so I don't know whether you're still there. There you are. Um, so any more questions, Don? People are really wanting to know where the finger paint painting went. Do we know where that is? Um, you know what? I'm going to tell you a really sad story. Uh oh. The sad story is in 1994, the Alexander Company uh, was owned by an investment group that bankrupted it. And all of those paintings, all of the PBS paintings, all of the all of these paintings were sold in an auction. And so I don't know who ended up with that painting. Um, I wasn't there when he filmed that, but I did go to the auction and I remember seeing it there and I had no idea what it was. If I had known what it was, then it would be in my possession, but I don't have it. So I don't know where it is now. But that's, uh, that was a very, very sad, sad day. But uh, as you can see, we bounce back. We don't stay down. We come back. Right, Buck? We can do another one. Right. We can do, oh, that would be fun. I don't know. That, that, would, that would be a lot of fun. But I'm just happy that you weren't using thinner. <laughs> any, okay, Don, any other questions? Not not that I've not that I've seen. Okay, all right. Well, we've been here a long time, and uh, Buck, you know what? Do you realize you've just spent a cup, almost two hours with us for your birthday, and we appreciate that uh, that you were willing to do that. Before we finish up, um, we're uh, we're going to run one more video, one more closing video, and if you want to stick around, just because I want that video that uh, froze at the beginning, I'm gonna play that again at the end, just because I want people to see that opening piece. So if you wanna stick around after the one, after we say, thank you for coming, I'm gonna play one more video after that. So if you wanna stick around for that, feel free to. Um, now, before we run this final one, I wanna just say thank you. Thank you to you, Buck. Thanks. You know, it, we waited 88 years to celebrate this day. Some of us may be up in heaven while we were waiting, but, you know, we've been waiting a long time for this. 
And we appreciate that one, that you were willing to spend the night with us and that you um, you had been such, such a great um, influence in all of our lives. I wanna thank Dawn. Dawn, thank you so much. And I want for all you do more than just this, as you know, I wanna thank uh, Levi and, uh, and I want to thank David and Dondi and Tim and Tanda and Johns. What a what a great time I had with you, and what a great tribute that you that you gave to your father. And I'm so grateful that uh, that we had that time together and we were able to share this. I want to thank all of you who sent in birthday wishes for Buck. And Buck, you're going to see some here in just a little bit. And I want to thank the people that ask that ask questions. So with that, I also want to give a shout out to Terry, who is Buck's technical advisor tonight. And Terry, I just want you to know that because you were there, both Buck and I slept a little better last night because we I knew you had his back. And so I just want to say thank you to you, Terry. That's great, Lori. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna finish up with this one video, and then uh, and then, like I said, I'm gonna play the first video again because I, I it, it's a beautiful a beautiful piece where Tim's opening up, and I I want everyone to be able to see it. Whoops. Let's see, just a minute here. <clears throat> Where'd the hair go? <laughs> Did the video show? It shut off, Lori. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. Um, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and start it again. I'm sh I'm sorry about that, you guys.
I am Timothy Paulson. I'm Buck and Carolyn's third child, third of five. And I was born in Canada, February of 1962. My parents were up in Canada. My dad was playing baseball. He was teaching. And about a week after I was born, they moved back to Santa Barbara. And so that was about March. It was March of 62. It was the next month that my dad met Claude Buck. And some of you have heard the story, but my dad, he was, as my siblings talk about, and we talk about, we're very proud that my dad was a professional baseball player. He played for the Fargo Moorhead Twins. He was 17 years old when he signed his first professional contract. He was so young that his dad had to co-sign. And my dad became a professional there. He played with the, the uh, Baton Rouge Red Sticks. He played with the Fort Walton Mets. He played uh, for several years, went into the service, came back, went to school and uh, got married. He was very fortunate to meet my mother. He married way over his head, of course, but they got married. They moved to Canada, moved back to Santa Barbara. My dad had, as, as my siblings talk about, he had his dream job. He was working for the recreation department. He was a supervisor. It was, it, it allowed him to play all day. That's what my dad loved doing. He loved, and to this day, at the age of 88, he loves playing. He's always playing sports. He's always looking for someone to participate in some sporting activity with him. So he had his dream job. But then one day he's walking down the street in Santa Barbara, came across an artist who was painting on an easel. And, and he went home to my mom and he said, you know, Tweet, I want to be an artist. And she said, well, you know, I'll get you an art set in August. It's your birthday coming up in August and I'll get you an art set then. Now, this is the first lesson I think about my dad. He could not wait. There was no way he was going to wait till August to get that art set. So he went out and he went to this uh, this uh, the store and he bought the art set. It's probably Alexander Art set. I don't know, maybe not. But anyway, he came home and he painted and he painted that first attempt. That's one that Dondi talks about. You know, <laughs> that it looks like he was three years old when he painted it. Imagine him saying to my mom, "I want to be an artist," and he's the furthest thing from it. He's a he's an athlete. He's not an artist. My dad took one class in school, one art class. It was junior high school. You know what grade he got? A D. That was his only experience in art. But then he was told about Claude Buck. Kitty West told my dad about Claude Buck. She said, my dad went into this, this studio, Dottie West's art studio. And he was talking to her about it. He said, I want to take adult education. I, I want to be an artist. And she said, she said, if you want to become a great artist, don't waste your time down with adult education at that time. You know, she said, I, I watched them. She said, if you want to become a great artist, go to the master, Claude Buck. She told him where Claude Buck lived. Claude Buck had moved to Santa Barbara a couple of years before. He's a master artist, 74 years old. My dad knocked on his door, went around, spoke to Claude Buck. And Claude Buck, he, he, he didn't ask my dad for a resume he didn't ask my dad what he studied in college. He didn't ask for samples of his artwork. But Claude Buck said this after just a few minutes of speaking with my dad. Let's see if we can make a great artist out of you in a year. Now, I tell that story because it was not anything other than my dad's passion, his burning desire. Now, how did he become a professional athlete? He was passionate. He was diligent. He worked as hard as he could. He saw something and he went after it, became a professional baseball player. With that same tenacity, with that same passion and drive, he started to paint. All right, Buck. That's it. Uh, we'll I'll, we'll just say goodbye this way, and I'll let you have the final word. Just a minute, Buck. This great. I won't tell you who it came from, but I sure appreciate it. That uh, kind of is like all the tributes that you've passed on this night. 
could make separate bouquets in my life. <clears throat> Thank you for doing it, Lori. It was uh, a grand experience. It's one that I'll remember forever. Thank you, Buck. Good night. Okay, love you, Lori. Love you too, Buck. Do I sign out?